Hello all and you're very welcome to the Premiership Immortals debate show. Uh, it's 20 years since the first ever Premiership final, uh, so we thought we'd celebrate it by having a fight. Hey, yeah, that's what I think to do. Who Sorry, was debate. In the first fight? Who was it's in the first debate. final? It's Ben against you, and then Lal against you, and then Ugo against you, and I okay. get whatever remains. You get, well, well, I think that's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's uh, like a normal fight. It's going to be a debate, actually. It's a debate about the greatest premiership team in the 20 years, and you're all going to debate it out. Happy with that? Yeah. 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 Shall I introduce you all formally? Okay. Ben, Lal, Ugo's, Craig, hey. Hi. Um, right, lads, uh, let's get up and running. We're going to start with the front row. So, well, over the course of this show, you're going to pick your best of a Don't know that team. way. So, yeah, yeah. I'm going to start with the front row. Um, you all have a say in this and just kind of trash it out. So, who wants to go first, Benny? Do you want to go well, first? Well, shall I go with the loose head? Because yeah. is there only one loose head on there? Oh, no, it's no, two. Round three as well. Yeah. Um, who else have we got? Joe Marlon not made it on there. I think all no. three of you picked Ayotza, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Who but went round three? I went Graham round three. Um, but I also would have Mako van der Polar on there, potentially. Maybe Joe Marler, like you said. Mm. Uh, but as you three have gone for it, so I think it's an easy selection, isn't it? It's three you, to one. You can't, you can't have a front row without an Argentinian, can you really? My, so, my point was that a lot of the tight heads that we've got on here are brilliant, were brilliant scrummagers, Julian White as well, and I think their job also was made a lot easier by having a great scrummager on the other side, but we know that he could do an awful lot around the field as well. So what? that's what's interesting about Hirta, right? Because it, there was more to, we think Argentinian front rowers just kind of scrummage and fight, but he actually had a lot more to his game, didn't he? I thought he was a brilliant player, unbelievable competitor, the results and the trophies that he ended up winning and... I know I've spoke about it before, but in terms of Leicester's ID, which Ben and Oz can obviously lean into more so than myself, but he was very much that. To be able to play whatever way in which this team's going to play, you have to have the foundations. And I, so I felt consistently delivered that. Um, do you want to put forward an argument for, for Rentry? Or are you just gonna... I think I already have, but three to one. There's, there's other battles worth uh, pushing harder on, I think, later. OK, uh, Hooker. Uh, well, you could go with George Shooter, who was... Um... Phenomenal in terms of the, the length he played. Seven titles, I think he won in, in, you know, in total. Um, I think Jamie George, still playing now, um, has been a serial winner. But Steve Thompson, you know, there's a whole load of them, really. But there's a guy that sort of changed the dynamics of the game, really, for me. Um, he can't be that happy all the time, either, Skulk Brits. I mean, he's, uh, I think he scored over 30 tries, uh, Premiership. And, you know, won a lot of titles. So, uh, does anyone disagree with that? No, I totally agree. And I think... Of course, we're going to have some incredible players, great servants to the Premiership, but there were very few, especially in the front row, that actually changed the way in which that position was thought about. This is him doing things which most centres would be truly proud of, his ability to create attack, spot space and execute, and the amount of trophies that he's won. And like I said, he was that smiling assassin right throughout his career. So, for so long, when he was playing, we are saying, if Saracens had a genuinely other world-class hooker, you'd have to find somewhere else for him on the field because of the stuff that he launched for them. And, uh, yeah, just a, a very special talent and uh, very well managed by Mark McCall as well. His right foot uh, sidestep and hitch kick was so good that he snapped his ACL by doing it to himself. I don't know if you remember the game. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. One of the first games down at the Stone X, he yeah. proper put a big step on, and it was so powerful that his leg just went... Still pfft. smiled. Still smiled. Yeah, of course he Hop, smiled. Hopped off. <laughs> but he's a guy, he'd, he'd, be on, he'd, be, um, he'd be on the pitch about to, you know, uh, throw the ball into a line out, and if you saw, he'd be like, hey, how are you? In the middle of a game, uh, the most extraordinary attitude well, to, he'd make, to he'd make a lot of different 15s, wouldn't he? Mm. All round 15. Most smiley 15, good, good bloke 15, best running 15, not shortest 15, uh, which I might get in. Uh, any other 15s he'd get in? Great hair, but I think he was a sensational rugby player. Um, on the subject of hair, I'm liking one of your tight heads. Yeah. Go on, Benny, you go with... Uh, well, look, I, I, I went for Castro, and I think the reason is I, I was very lucky to play with some brilliant tight heads. Julian White, I've mentioned. Darren Garforth, I understand why Austin's put him in, one of my favourite players. But I think Castro now, playing how he used to do then, in this era, this year, would still be as big an impact. Very, very good scrummager. The scrummaging's become less important, still a factor now, but it was the major part of a tight heads game. But he had everything else. He had hands... And he was a he was a he became a superstar, big global superstar, playing in the Premiership, and uh, yeah, I, it was just I had great fun to be around as well. I agree with it, not because of his rugby stuff, but any lad that can survive a weekend with Zlatan Ibrahimovic in Las Vegas, 
deserves to be. When you should be playing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he did tell his his mum he was going for a bit of physio on his knee. (laughs) The other great story is he... Well, two stories. Firstly, he he only was allowed to take up rugby because he punched the basketball referee because he wasn't allowed to play rugby. So he got himself deliberately banned for life from basketball by punching the referee. And... The cycling shorts he wore, he used to strap his legs up and had to tell his gran that he had bad hamstrings because he had tattoos and she, he didn't want her to know That's where them that, covered up. That, that she had uh, tattoos. Um, so. I'm still, I still maintain, though, if him and Garforth were in the same squad, Castro Giovanni would not have played on a Saturday. One who's of the, the better hardest, player? Yeah. Who's What's the better player? Well, I, don't, I, it's, I think fair. it's really hard that, to say. That is a really tough choice. Yeah, that is Cole, a really tough it, position. The tight head, I think, is really yeah, tough. It, it depends is. what your criteria is. And I think if it's for scrummaging, you'd probably have to go Dan Cole. If it was ability around the park, you'd probably go Castro. If it was for intelligence, you'd go Green. If it was outright hardness and being a psychopath who never took a backward step, you'd go Garforth. So Which do you want, Craig? Pick your choice. Well, I tell you what I'd go for. I know, I mean, what the hey, what do I know? But... In terms of servant to the game and the Premiership, Dan Cole, he's had 227 outings for Tigers. I don't know. I selected Dan Cole in in my team. I think for for all of these players, especially in the front row, when you talk about longevity and consider what they have to do, it's remarkable, every one of them. I think Dan Cole's been a totem pole for Leicester. He's a person that's probably straddled a couple of different spheres and eras within that time. He's, had, he's been a brilliant understudy in everything that he's learned to then become the player that he is. That's why I voted for Dan Cole. He is premiership all over, isn't he? He's funny. Well, you've got to admire that someone who is, has been to the top, stayed there for such a long time, has then got picked for England in the World Cup, didn't work out, gone back to his club, worked even harder, and then got himself, you know, probably in the shape of his life, whatever shape that is. It's also interesting Round. when you look at that. <laughs> Round. you got England, you got South Africa, you've got Argentina, which kind of, that's what the Premiership has been over the past 20 years. It's a real melting yeah. pot, isn't it, of, of, of international stars. It's, and a that's the beauty of it. it's a good front row, that. It's got a good balance to it. So have I we won the agreed. front row tight head battle? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Have, yeah. Well done. Uh, we've got to do second rows, OK, in a minute. Uh, it's my phone. What's that? I think that's the link to break. Is it? Yeah. All right, uh, here's a break. Uh, see you for second rows in a minute. I thought it was my phone. Welcome back to Premiership Immortals. Uh, we've had 20 Premiership finals and we're celebrating by picking the all-time Premiership team. So the lads basically have a fairly good idea of their top 15. So they're trying to join them all together in unison and harmony. It's beautiful. The guys have been talking about dancing on Strictly. We have all sorts happening. More on that later on. <laughs> um, we have our front row. It's a lovely front row, Ugo, because it really reflects like the international nature of the Premiership, doesn't it? An Argentinian, a South African and an Englishman. And it's been easy so far. Not too yeah. many disagreements. Let's hope that can continue. Um, second rows. Do you, want to, do you want to go first? Yeah, I selected Martin Johnson. It felt like the simple and obvious choice, but Benny, you played well, with him. Did anyone not select him? No. No. No, so we'll stick him note. straight in. That's <laughs> yeah. the easy one. Um, yeah, look, I think when you talk about Premiership players that were brilliant, you want consistency of performance. I don't think there's probably ever been a more consistent uh, player than Martin Johnson. Levels never dipped. As a leader, fantastic. Didn't say as much as some, but um, didn't need to. Just, you know, played the way he played and everyone followed him. And there was a fear factor amongst some people about playing against him as well. Um, And, you know, you talk about who the leadership, who the people are in successful teams that drive the standards. And and he was that, but great bloke. I think it's not just the leadership. I mean, when you look at, you know, look back in 50, 100 years time, he was actually one of the best players in his position in the world. I mean, you know, just the work rate, the stats, even managed a little sidestep, scoring a premiership try, I think, in one of his last games at Quinn's. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was he like, Lars? Uh, Ryan O'Neill, he sold that, sold that uh, dummy too. I reckon he'd had his own chair, though, wouldn't he, on the side of the pitch for 14 cameras on the field nowadays. Yeah. The Johnson sin bin. Was he that bad? Uh, no. no. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, he didn't... <laughs> he, it wasn't like... I love violence. No, he did. <laughs> what? It wasn't, no, no, it, wasn't, no, no, it, wasn't, no. it wasn't like he, you know football on a Saturday or anything like that. He was... didn't. He didn't like being wronged. So if he felt that his team had been wronged and he hadn't had retribution for it, he'd go and find his own. If Benny K was a, a football team, he'd be Chelsea. Jono would be Millwall. Oh, so. that gives you a rough idea, I think. 
What was he like, Lal, when you were alongside him in the tunnel? We saw those images there coming out on the test. Intimidating even nah, for you? Just the presence, really. I mean, uh, respect. Was let him go first. Yeah. <laughs> Little tap on the bum. No, no. no he's listen. He he uh, he was uh, he was a brilliant player, and uh, we maybe didn't see eye to eye in the early days. He thought I was a bit, you know, flash. Um, How would he have got that? I don't know. Can't That's think. Insane. I mean, they they sit they sit down crazy. They'd sit down and talk about scrummaging, and line outs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but we came together, and uh, he was, you know, listen, he's uh, he's a great man. Who's going to partner him in the second row? Oh, this, this is a good debate. Ben K, definitely. It's very nice of you, Austin. Yeah, I know. I just th thought he was an amazing player for the abilities he was born with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you see these people and you think, how did you get to this position? But you've got to admire that, you know, that hard work ethic because for some people it's just natural, it's easy. Yeah, You're always going to be. Well, they, you know, they, they actually have a position. Yeah, yeah, they're always going to achieve greatness. Gotcha. And other people, they've just had to slog it out stage by stage, selection, sucking up to coaches. And, you know, that's why I think Benny should be in. Oh, that's, that's very cool. I didn't pick myself. Um, oh, you should have. No, should have. I presume you. I presume Benny, you go on. Yourself. We bow to your judgment I, on this. I presume you picked yourself. Yeah, you? obviously. Yeah. Did, did you pick yourself? I might have had a little influence. Yeah, so there's that. a <laughs> yeah, fine line between. Well, well it, was me, it was me or Martin, me, me or Martin Corey, wasn't it, really? So, <laughs> hmm, no <laughs> choice. Um, I, this guy has to have a mention. I know that in the modern game you have one athletic player uh, and one at the front of the line-out, but if you talk about what he's done in the Premiership, mm. he's been absolutely phenomenal. His longevity, I think his stats are absolutely incredible. He's won titles. He actually played very well against this young man when they went head-to-head. -head. I totally agree. If Jono wasn't there, I would have put yeah. Shawsy in, 100%, but he's a front jumper, and if you put both those two in there, there's no point doing the backs because we're not going to get any ball. No, well, we just... So, the ball is a distraction if you put those two in. My choice was a Toji. Yeah, 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 I'd go with Toji. Yeah. I, I went for a Toji as well. I think we've got a real good pairing of sheer athleticism, brutality and physicality, and I think we've got a natural-born leader, a natural-born winner, and an unbelievable competitor. You forget the guy's not even 30 yet. For the amount of trophies he's won and big moments within big fixtures, he's that barometer of energy and success at Saracen. So I'm glad he's... Uh, I, still think his, I still think his best is yet Yeah, to I was come. about to say the same. I hope so. We, he's had a poor, by his standards, he's had a poor year and a half, maybe two years. But exactly what Hugo said, the amount he achieved so young, he could easily come back and be an even better player <coughs> than he has been in the past, in which case he'll be right up there. And don't, as and, and don't forget, the these, guys, these guys are, are, are trying to get into this team by playing only half the number of Premiership games. I mean, when we were all playing, you virtually played every Prem game. Now, maybe 13 games in a season. Can you imagine how lethal that would be? All his physicality, all his dynamism, that would be a dream combo, wouldn't it? And that's what you're looking for. When I look at that front row, I see how they really complement each other and actually allow each individual to breathe to bring their very best. And I absolutely see the same there in the second row. OK, so there we go, our front five. Uh, back row now, Austin. Do you want to get us up and around there? Well, it's, this is actually going to be really tough. Probably the, well, the hardest bit to choose, I think. You look at what everybody else has chosen. Um, and if we're going for balance or we're going for playing in the modern day or playing 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you get a completely different team. Yeah. So I'm going to pick based on today. And I think that team would still perform amazingly well today. So I'm going to go at six for Courtney Laws. I think that he, gives you, choice, yeah. he gives you just a few more options than... Lewis Moody, who I selected at six. Or Joe Worsley. Or Joe fair. Worsley. <coughs> a bit more height, another carrier, and another enforcer. I mean, imagine playing against that pack. You've got three guys in there already you don't want to mess with. A little bit of flair, but also another option in the line-out. I know Mudos could get lifted, but this guy doesn't need much lifting, and he runs around the field clobbering people. Who's it, Courtney? I had Courtney, yeah. Courtney? Uh, I didn't, actually. I had Joe Worsley, only because... Oh. Um, Shall I put them all down here? I'll put three of them down here for a moment I, and debate um, them, and we'll put one back, right? I mean, there's a reason why he walks around with his neck sort of slightly to one side, because he made all of my tackles. If it was any, any big ball carrier that used to be in the team, he used to send Joe in there and say, uh, he's your man. Um, and I just think his ability to win games on his own... The performances um, stand out to me. Um, I mean, I agree now with what Austin, you know, the modern game, I think Joe's line out was nothing in comparison to, uh, to that. I mean, he tackles superbly well. He was the, you know, the chop tackle, unbelievable. Oh, right. 37 tackles in one European game, was it? Yeah. I mean, that's... But Joe was a, probably the best defen defensive six 
you know, we've seen, but Courtney Laws does all that. He has those yeah. big shot moments in the game, wins really good line out ball, steals a lot of line out ball. But the most impressive thing is he was told by England he wasn't a big enough ball carrier, went away and worked on it and became a really, really good ball carrier. As well. I agree with that. Courtney Laws, over the last few years, in terms of we talk about players being coachable, especially when you're world class and you think about those marginal games. He certainly has a well more rounded game and actually offers more than what Joe Worsley does. I selected Joe Worsley on my side. I agree with Ben. I think he's the best defensive number six we've ever had. But for this team, I'm now leaning towards a Courtney Laws. I've Courtney's never been it. hit harder by anyone than Courtney Laws. Really? Well. Never. How sore is it? Well, I remember we were in England training, we were practicing restarts, caught the restart, and he just came through me, folded me. And that was like a Thursday training session. Where Thursday? Trying, yeah, where you're just trying to dial it down a little bit. <laughs> but he was young and he snapped me in half. A bit and... early in the week. Yeah. You're going for you to be training. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it, but it took people at home watching quite a while to get used to that because they hadn't seen guys flying out and creasing guys like that before. And you remember the crowds at the stadiums would be given out and you're going, it's a perfectly legal tackle. It was just so dynamic, wasn't it? But the evolution of him as well, just not just in terms of his game, but also he's gone on to become England captain. I remember I played my debut with him and he was raw and athletically gifted and his energy level was amazing. But the leadership qualities which he's developed over the last few years, I actually think he's been playing some of his best rugby in, in his latter years. OK, seven, open side. I went for Neil back. Uh, the reason I did is he was in an era where people obviously were saying, oh, everyone needs to be massive to play rugby. Uh, he's too small. And I think his success at the breakdown in terms of a jackler, mm. that wasn't the only part of his game. He was a brilliant support player, but his role as a jackler meant other teams went, we have to have one of those. And we're now seeing that, you know, you look around the league and Tommy Rafael, um, the Curry brothers, everyone has to have Jacklers in their team because it's that important. And <clears throat> Leicester's defence was good in that sort of turn of the century team. And a lot of it was down to the fact that, yes, we'd make our tackles, but when we were in our red zone, more often <coughs> than not, he'd come away with a, with a penalty. He, he redefined the fitness you needed in the back row, you know, uh, to set those levels incredibly high. When you're looking for people who are tough, I mean, you've only got to look at his face. It tells a thousand stories. <laughs> uh, he was seriously tough. And like all good number sevens, he was a little bit weird. Um, <laughs> you know, sort of washing up the, the you know, cups and saucers after when he got room service. So none of those people to do that for you, Bucky. Um, and... Oh, he's here. Oh! oh. 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 I haven't even discussed. Oh. You've chosen it, have you? Oh. There's only one chance okay. on there at the minute. Who, who, who did you go for? We're talking Hold about on a sec. Don't put Bucky in the corner. Without... Nobody puts Bucky in the corner. No, they don't. So I, I, I went for my captain when we were in the it. Premiership in, in Chris Robshaw. And whilst Neil Back, someone that I watched um, whilst I was at school because I'm that young, um, Chris Robshaw of his generation in terms of what they did as a seven. Yeah, he's good on the floor, but all seven should be. But his attacking work, his leadership qualities, in terms of his wins, he's got more wins as a seven than any other seven in the Premiership. An outstanding player, and I actually think in terms of evolution of that position, he took it on one step further. A brilliant captain. I'm not going to say brilliant bloke, because you don't get in team by being a good lad, but... An exceptional player. Even so Harlequins right. didn't pl always play him at seven. Six and a half. It's six and a half, half mate. Six. Six but no, look, uh, look, I do get he is. He, he was a good player and a, a very, very good leader for Harlequins. I think it's a good debate, but I do think this team, this forward pack, needs a jackler. And this guy, as you've all said, was an amazing guy over the ball. OK, so Chris, sorry. Oh, sorry, back, Chris, off you go. Good try scoring yeah. record, was it 58 tries? Yeah, for, all at the back, for 60 all at the back of the <laughs> And like every, like every good seven, made the illegal look legal. Yeah, and yeah. hugely popular in Munster. He is. Massively popular down there. They love him. They do now. Uh, they do now. Uh, number eight. This guy. Oh. I yeah. stuck this guy in there. Like, I know you didn't. Yeah, exactly. We can chat about that. But <laughs> for me in terms of what you need from a number eight is someone who's dependable, reliable, an elite player with an unbelievable mindset. And Lawrence is all of that, you know. He won multiple times. We speak about the emotion and rising to those big occasions where he's certainly all of that. You I, know? I, I was very, very close between him and Martin Corey, two people that, that battled Who did you all pick? their career. I went for Lawrence because yes. he's a bit of a crier. <laughs> and I thought, Coser will get, away, get, get over it. I don't think Lawrence will get over it if I didn't pick him. So I went, went for lol. I, and we right. wouldn't hear the end of it. We I think your number eight's got to be dynamic, but moreover hard. And there was a fight between 
Cosa and Lawrence a few years ago, and Cosa definitely won. Oh. So, and M Cosa is a complete nutcase. You're confusing me with someone who cares, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I went for Cosa. And I've been on holiday with him, and he's a top lad. And uh, I went for Corey. Well, I think line out better, carrying better. Um, chat. Chat. OK, there's, that's even. Uh, but but he doesn't get a chance to chat when Austin. All right. over. Good control at the base. Never let the ball pop out. The scrum. That's why I went for Corey. I just thought it was an easier decision. But you're a lot. You're Lawrence, who did you go for? Uh, well, I was going to pick Martin Corey, then I realised I'm better, so I picked. <laughs> <laughs> Stick him in. Stick Do you yourself. know what? I'm going to back you up because I love you. Come here. Come here. I've been out voted. There you go. Sorry. There you go. Very Sorry, proud Cosa. of you. Get him in there. Exactly. Sorry, Cosa. I've been out voted. Because <laughs> I'm better. Uh, uh, there you go. Can't get uh, on the line. Hang on. There, we go. there you go. Uh, there you decent go. pack. Good pack. <laughs> good, good pack. That. That, well pa done. that pack would win the Premiership now. So much fun. <laughs> no, it's, it's fun. It's a, it's a break again. It's a break. Yeah. See you after the break for the backs. Uh, welcome back. We're having a, it's a very nice, happy debate mm, about the all-time uh, Premiership team because we've had 20 Premiership finals and this is how we're celebrating. I would have rather we'd gone out, to be honest. Yeah, we'll go done with it this. in the pub. Yeah, we could have done it. Still, still time. Yeah, still time. Still time. Um, we've done the forwards. Uh, Oz, this is a great pack. It's an amazing pack. But what does that pack need, really, behind it? It needs pace. It needs unbelievable, blistering pace that sits behind it because it's going to create a lot of space. Do you want me to do the backs now? I'd do the backs straight away. OK, should we do that? Yeah, do you want to start? Let's... Why don't you start? No, no, I think let someone else start at Scrum Half. I mean, it's only my area of expertise, but obviously, I think... That... Who did you select? Oh, well, Austin? strange you should ask Hugo, but I select this No, don't, don't put, put him on. Put yourself don't put in, on. just no, as just an option. There. No, just leave him on the... Just yeah, the side. Yeah, side. Yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah. okay. You selected That's ugly, yeah. ugly Harry yeah. Styles. Yeah. OK. Really just, made really made that 22 shade of own. I think what you needed was somebody who, if he'd have concentrated in just one position, then... You wouldn't have heard about Matt Dawson or Kieran Bracken or Andy Gomes. So these guys, they wouldn't have existed. But unfortunately, had a tendency to just and the ability to just play anywhere and win matches in the last second like this against Wasps yeah. under do, the post. Do you think he annoyed people? <sighs> yeah. I think so. But you, think he you know, people? winners, they're not there to make friends. They're there yeah. to be winners. It's weird that because I remember, <laughs> I remember watching <laughs> Austin before I played in the Premiership and I thought he's a great player. And then I lost so much respect for him after I ruined him um, at the stoop when I ran round you and. I don't know if that was the beginning of... Yeah, but I had, all of, I had all of a microphone on the side of the pitch and you ran around the outside of the pitch. Which, well, you know... Yeah. You didn't, you didn't, that wouldn't, that wouldn't have been outside the M25 for you, ago, would it? Really? He needed to find the club that suited him and the reason he was a one-club man was because he couldn't go anywhere else because everyone hated him. And we just had found... It's a little bit harsh, we, we just found the, workplace. Yeah, the best harsh. way to get the best out of him, which was like on away trips, lock him in the boot of the bus so you didn't have to speak to him and just roll him out. Des, 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 right. Des Seabrook once, once said that the best way to deal with me would be to put me in a cage from Sunday to Friday, then let me out Saturday afternoon. Which that is be funny because that's scenario. how you spend your holidays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe maybe blow, dart, Saturday blow dart you after <laughs> no wine before nine and blow dart you after five pints. Oh, you are dreaming. Oh, okay, okay, so the player that you pick most, you three, I think, yeah. is this guy, Danny Kerr. There's no one, in my opinion, who's had a better and more positive. <laughs> Attacking threat. We'll put you side by side. But Danny Kerr, in terms of his contributions, he's fourth or fifth on the all time Premiership top try scoring record. No nine has scored more tries than him. No nine has created more assists than him. And he's absolutely phenomenal. His link play, the partnership which he develops, Lawrence as a number eight, the type of nine you'd have wanted to play behind. In terms of the chaos that he provides and some of the flicks and the tricks. This sensation has consistently done that one. Two Premiership titles. Just two. Just the two. I, I, he's only played listen, in two. I can't deny he's a wonderful player, but I think we, you've, got to, you've got to include this guy in the conversation. I mean, this guy, when you're talking about Premiership Immortals, I'm not going to put him in there just yet, but he is a legend. Yes. I mean, he has won seven titles at three different clubs. He came down to London. He's gone back to Leicester. He's won a title as a coach. He's still coaching now, and I think his influence on the game in the Premiership, yeah. not England, the Premiership, I think is greater oh, than stats, any other nine. His stats and his ability in big games are, well, they're second to none. But would all the backs outside of him that you've got on here just want to be chasing box kicks? I don't think they would. 
It's a well, good, I mean, good I point. Mean, is his pass good enough to get the, to, to create the real space outside? I reckon 90 England caps would suggest, yeah. I, listen, I, so I went for Danny Kerr. Um, partly longevity. I, I think he should have had more England caps than he actually has had. But I think he's an even better player in the Premiership. But when there's a little bit more space for him to work his magic in that red zone, those little uh, threaded through attacking kicks, scrubbers... He's, he's just got great vision and he doesn't overplay his hand in, in terms of that. Some nines that, that like to go from the base do it all the time. He bides his time and, and uh, so he... Can, can I just give one... Can I give the fans' perspective very, very quickly? Yep. Uh, like, one of the most talented players... You can I've either have seen. the modern-day no, no, Dupont like, or you can no, have someone like else. You're, you're one of the most talented players I've ever seen play the game. V. All right, no doubt about one of. But you're, you're just not in there at nine. Okay. okay, that's because fine. Because I just don't opinion. think so. I think I'm just going to I'm just going to say I think the lads have a really interesting debate here. If I can throw a fan's perspective on one club, and just so much fun to watch. Yeah. You pay to see him play. He is a phenomenal person, well, player, etc. I mean, et the, the, the bookends. He, you know, he won he won the first title in 2012, mm -hmm. and the second title ten years later. Yeah. Probably probably playing even better rugby. Yeah. And there's no doubt that. So he's in. If I can't pick myself. I'm going to have to pick Danny Kerr. OK. He's top try scorer. Interestingly, as well, it, it depends a little bit on who you have as a 10. Oof. But the fact that one of the guys on there was Wigglesworth's partner doesn't necessarily preclude the fact that actually Farrell and Kerr would be quite an interesting combination so we've, we've, together. we've gone for Danny Kerr, and if you take a look at his footage over here, it just shows how good he is. <laughs> and, you know, if we, if, we, if we look at that, don't blow it off. Pardon? Talking about oh. the hair. <laughs> silly, I hope silly. you're talking about your hair. That's for sure. What? No, oh. no. I think, oh. oh, God, I can't believe you've thrown that away. Screen's anyway, gone. Just... <laughs> Honestly. Oh. Anyway, let's just leave that. That's That's right. Right. Move on, move on, move on. Um, tens, tens. By halves? Yeah. Well, I've got some more stickers. <laughs> uh, but if I wasn't allowed to use the stickers, obviously we've got a couple of options. We've got Farrell, who has done everything. Oh, and oh, oh, we've got Andy Good. He was yeah, tired. He's tired. He, he went back, back for a yeah, sit down. We've got <laughs> Charlie Hodgson. Probably one of the best passers of, of the ball, best passes. if and not then, the best. And then if you want a left field selection that fly <laughs> off, uh, you've got this guy here. I'll put him on the bench. Also, what's, what's the tilt of the head situation? I had a bad neck. I didn't Angles. love the tackling like, just Joe. Trying to be cute. like, like Joe Wesley. You're trying to be cute. Uh, yeah. That arrogance thing. OK, discuss. They're your three. I think Charlie Hodgson's the best pass of the ball we've ever seen in the Premiership. Remarkable player. Um, of course, historic back in 2005, delivering sales first and only trophy. I just think, as a player, the consistency, the drive, and what do you really want? What's the foundations that you want set from a fly half? This kicking game, it's control, um, kicking at post, he delivers all of that. And the way, the, the brain on the man is absolutely sensational. I think he's a wonderful player, but... He wasn't my pick. I think pick we, we agreed. Didn't we agree this was a team to play now yeah. that would take on and win the title now? That's what the only reason why you can't pick Charlie because he'd be a weakness defensively. Yeah, he you'd couldn't, get, you'd I mean, get hit yeah, down that absolutely. channel. He made he made tackles, but he got carried in the tackle. Argument for Andy Good, best restarter of a ball I've ever seen. I mean, the height he used to put on those kicks, I've no idea how he did it. He's feisty as hell, a little yeah. bit like Farrell. He reads gets it, stuck in, well, reads it. the game well, he spots a gap, got good passing game, takes the ball to the line. You know, very underestimated by a lot of people because of all the periphery, all the other stuff that goes on around him. But so. when you look at Owen Farrell, is he not a combination of yeah. the best yeah. bits of yeah. what those so, two yeah. do? Yeah, I yeah. think he is. And as well, the thing with Farrell is he plays to the game plan. But he has got the skill set to be able to do stuff. We're seeing here the clips. You know, he's got great passing game when he's need, oh. when it's needed. He's got a great kicking game when it's needed. But he's got the mentality to do what he's been, well, he's come up with with his coach is the best way of winning a game. And you need that mental strength as well. He is one of those people that is a born winner. And that is having that extra couple of percent in there the, the of dips, born winners. The dips in form that he's had are the very same dips in form that Johnny had. And they're based on when they start doing other jobs for other people, when they get a bit worried about what's going on in the <clears> team. <throat> We've seen him with England in the Six Nations. He did a little bit too much at times, and it detracts from all the great things he can do. But for me, yeah. Farrell's the choice. He, he just needs a weekend off because yeah. there's no one in his team that is... He's so far above everyone else in terms of his drive, his talent, his leadership, his, his you know, talismanic abilities. He just needs someone to have a go at him occasionally or just, just have a little rest for a week. You're putting him in. 
Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think that clutch kick, I know it was controversial against Gloucester in the middle of the season, those key moments when someone stands up and takes the reins and, and does the job. One of the, re guy. one of the reasons he's unpopular with some people in the public eye is exactly the reason that every player who plays with him would put him up there as the first team, first name on the team sheet because he's got that drive, he's got that little bit of edge about him, that nastiness, and it winds people up the wrong way. He'll be appreciated more in his retirement because mm. he is one of the greatest players England have ever produced. Fair, yeah. I'm giving him that for that because he's misunderstood as well and he's a fantastic bloke, yeah. a lovely guy. And his dad coaches Ireland. Which and his really dad coaches about, Ireland. So but actually how he's managed that situation as well, both of them have, has been phenomenal. I just don't think he gets enough respect out there. Yeah. So fair play it on does from, It does from us. It does from us, he certainly does. OK, um, centres, this, was, this is going to be easier. So take it away there, Benny, because you seem to agree on this one. You... Well, inside, a uh, person that was the glue in midfield for um, Saracens through all their glory against... Um, well, they're, they're sort of more on the outside, so apart from, obviously, Will Greenwood against Will Greenwood. I don't think... Will Greenwood's a fine, fine international player. I don't think he was as... Uh, as much of an impact in the Premiership as he was in an England shirt. But Barrett, mm. maybe not the, the skill set that Will Greenwood had, but as that defensive glue. And all the teams that have won the most championships, it's been based on having a horrific defence to play against. And Barrett was the key to that. Even despite his physical prowess, his ability with ball in hand, his ability to make big shots himself, he made sure that when Saracens were going after those big hits, there were no spaces left. I think he also, you know, when he retired from international rugby, he went back to Saracens, he stayed at Saracens, and actually his level didn't drop. And I think you value as a player in terms of still playing at international quality level, but, you know, week in, week out for your club. It's a shame he tackled with his face most of the time, so he ended up with a lot of stitches. When you consider the amount of titles that he won for Saracens as captain, I think it takes a very special human being to be captain of a side that's got so many international players. It says so much for you, it says so much for what the coaches and the players think of you. So we're talking about his respect, but in terms of his consistent delivery of big moments during big, big games, he is, for me, just the ultimate, ultimate number 12. Austin, it's interesting how different Saracens became in defence when he left. Yeah, it was a big hole, wasn't he, when he left? I think the only other player you could put in there potentially is Manu. Yeah. When you look at the makeup of how the team's starting to take shape here now and, and how it looks in terms of balance, is maybe put Manu in there. But Barrett could carry the ball over the tackle line. He always secured that 10, 12, 13 channel defensively, yeah. very astute. I, I, I wouldn't say that he played every game when he was 100% fit. No, I don't think he played I mean, any think, games when he was 100% fit. And therefore, fit. I think that his durability yeah. and, and his toughness is, um, is another thing that adds quality. Um, 13, this, this picture of Fraser Waters, I just see Dumb and Dumber. Um, it's on the <laughs> Anyone else? You've seen that? Well, he is that he would, you know, no? we, we need someone to, you know, to write the speeches afterwards. I mean, he's, uh, <laughs> um, he's the poshest guy in our team, really. So, Lawrence, uh, I think a lot of younger viewers won't really know much yeah. about him. You've played with him. Tell yeah. us about him. Why is Amazing everyone raving about him so much? Well, listen, he, he was, you know, earmarked right from the start. He was down at Bristol. Very talented group of players. Martin Corey, Simon Shaw, uh, Kieran Bracken, Alex King, Fraser Waters, Josh Lucy, all at Bristol University, all ca came through the ranks, uh, joined WASP very early. Um, and, you know, was the defensive captain for the, you know, the, the much lauded Sean Edwards defence, uh, you know, blitz. I think, I don't know, but I think it's one of the hardest positions to play on the rugby field. Certainly one of the hardest positions to defend. Uh, and time and time again, he got it right because he had to lift the team emotionally. Um, and, you know, you've got a split second to make a decision defensively. And if you get it wrong... At 13, you haven't got much time to adjust. So I think I he's, thought he's an intelligent he's a rugby player, player. Very intelligent rugby player. Relatively quick, but in this modern day team, not quick enough to play in the 13 shirt. Leon That's Lloyd. why Leon has to be there. Leon Lloyd, a better attacking player. Definitely. I think that there was there was a fear factor played against Leon Lloyd. There was a fear factor when he got hold of the ball um, because of his pace because of his lines of running and his ability to connect as well. Like, that's Austin going over for a cheap try. That's Geordie. Is it? It's Geordie. <laughs> OK. So I just wasn't quite sure because the thinning of the head. But, um, but he was as quick as any back three player, but in that outside centre channel. But I, I've got to agree with Lawrence in so many ways because he was the architect in tandem with Sean Edwards about defensive systems that the best teams, international or club level, use today. So... 
We're talking about players that have stood the test of time and what he brought and how he changed the way we defend across the rugby landscape. I don't down think to we people can pick. Like him. They won three on the bounce. Yeah. Three defense. on the bounce. Defense. And he's man of the match in we've every got game. Defence, defence, defence. You can't have 10, 12 and 13 all being predominantly defensive guys. I was guys. about to say the same you thing. I mean, these attack. are who I picked. I picked Farrell, Barrett and, and Waters. My only problem with that was exactly what Austin's saying. You've got a great back three to come and... Are you going to are you going to make the most of those so, guys? You have to stretch the defence, and the guy that was best at stretching defences was Leon. Lund. Also, he does a bit of agency work now. If we put him in there, we might get a bit of corporate work, lads. I mean, I have to say, you, you, yeah. you, you're, you're only jokes. looking at his defence again. I have to tell you that what scored, no, no. scored a hell of a lot yeah. of tries through yeah. him. Oh. Not not him personally, but Josh Lucy, you know, Saki and Boyce, leading try scorers. I've seen these guys go head to head probably about four or five occasions. And I know I'm slightly biased, but I think Leon had the upper hand in slightly that Slightly biased. You selected your own team, which was 1-15 to 15 Leicester. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, just and, better, just better I mean, players. You, you, you reined it in a bit, because you didn't pick yourself in every position. But, yeah. you know, only in five of them. Well, 13, I, I think for me, you, you have to stretch the defence. Fraser was a fantastic rugby player. Played with him for England A, played with him for the students, for the under-21s. But for me, Leon's a better rugby player. But that scene when he licks the lamppost, it's so funny. Yeah, the uh, the ski lift. Yeah, the ski we've got oh, a two we've that. got a two two split two, here, two Craig. Split. Yeah. Because I mean, I you know that goes to the vote, I'm afraid. I'm going. I, I, I did, I'm well, going I, to... I did put Fraser in. Yeah, to my so team did I. Initially, yeah, listen, we can't agree on everything. Austin well, says. So. Do you know what well, I'm going to I'm going to say that when I speak to because I don't know, but when I speak to former pros, they talk about Fraser Waters so much from all the different clubs. We're talking 20 years of the Premiership. I think he wins it. Um, hopefully, we have a back three that can light up this whole, whole team. Hang on, sorry. Okay, answer that, will you? Fastest finger first. Hey, Lloydie, sorry. I know I wanted you. The others didn't, though. Uh, join us after the break. We're going to do the back three. I know, such idiots, right? Welcome back. We're celebrating 20 years of Premiership Finals by picking the ultimate Premiership team. Well, I'm not. The lads are. And they know what they're talking about. Although, it got a little bit tetchy when it came to the midfield. Currently, it's Barrett and Waters. It's going to stay like that. The debate whether Leon Lloyd should be in there because he's more creative. Quite a defensive-looking midfield. Tualangi. Tualangi, yeah. Tyndall. Tyndall. But now... Jamie Noon was a good player up at Newcastle. And they're about, it's about being servants to your club in the Premiership as well. So what you're going to need is you're going to need an incredibly exciting back three to make this all sing, aren't you? Do you want to go first, Hugo? What are you going with? I mean, for me, it's not much of a debate. There's not been a better try scorer in the Premiership than Chris Ashton. He's had a phenomenal career. I think he redefined and changed the way in which wingers thought about the game. He's one of the most competitive players that I've played with or against. His record itself speaks volumes. I mean, he's had, a, he's had a sketchy career and this is not a good moment. Nick Easter just decided to flick it on. I must have been maybe not quite warmed up to chase him back and ankle tap him, but the ass splash, he is a fan's favourite, having won titles almost that every club has been at and he's been at most, whether it's Saracens. Do you think he's like a rugby mercenary? I mean, because he came from rugby league. I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with you. I think he's absolutely the right choice. But just why does he go to a club and then leave after three, four, three years? Is it just because he, they've run out of money or...? I don't know. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but you look at the clubs that he signed for and played for, whether it be a Northampton, whether it be a Saracens, Harlequins, Leicester, Ansel, Toulon. He's played at mega clubs yeah. and, he's, and we were discussing it earlier, but I think he might be the only player to win back-to-back -back Premiership titles in seasons with two different clubs. It's also... He's always looked a lot, lot better when he's been in a good side. He, yeah. he te when he's around quality, he is unbelievable. He gets annoyed when he's not around quality. Mm. And we've seen him move on from clubs very, very quickly because of it. But Toulon, when he's been at Leicester, when he, obviously Saracens as well, when Northampton were, were winning things, uh, look, I think... Um, All good strikers need supply. But they're generally quite they self. Yeah. Good quite, crosses, yeah. that's what he's like. I mean, this side needs a finisher. He's the best finisher out there. My argument might be, because of the midfield, you've all picked, oh, God, he's still you might need more creativity it. in the back three. Well, he looked, an argument. He, he looked at his best. It depends what the trade-off is. Ang running angles off Farrell, wasn't yeah. it? When Farrell well, was he's going to have to chase... He chases the middle really well, yeah? Danny so, Kerr. 
yeah, maybe ch chasing Danny through the middle. I, I, look, I, I think it's a really difficult one because of the makeup of the team. Any other side, he's in straight and, away. And you two know that wingers are quite selfish people generally. I mean, they always know when they've scored a try uh, and when they're opposite, you know, when the person on their own team has scored a try. Just let me start the debate. See, it's weird because look, Austin and I are slightly different because I didn't rely on other people to create magic. I just created it myself. A magician, yeah. Gotcha. Austin needed good players around right. him to make him look good, and maybe yeah. that was the point of difference. Can't okay. bring that guy into the conversation. Yeah, bring him into on the other wing, maybe yeah, on the yeah, left. Yeah. Alessana then. Alessana, well. I mean, definitely. Yeah, when you talk is. about try scorers, yeah. over a hundred. He had ninety playing for a, yeah. a club side that won one trophy, but didn't weren't actually necessarily always in the conversation at the end of the season. So I think in terms of consistency. And it, you know, but for you're right, but he was the top try scorer in the top 14 as well. Yeah, well, no, no, I'm just, and if you can't have two finishes, you're gonna to have to have a balance on the wing. But I, do, but I do agree with Lawrence, I'm not saying I'm putting Quates into the team, but we've seen an exponential growth in tries being scored in the yes. Premiership yeah, over yeah. the last few years. He was scoring <laughs> at a point where tries <laughs> were, came at a premium. He's he's an incredible finisher. Um, he truly, he truly was unbelievable competitor. I think there's loads of similarities between Mark Cueto yeah. and Chris Ashton, yeah. two proper out-and-out -out strikers. You're kind of, I think, when you look at football and you look at strikers and what they do, you've got Thierry Henry, who's someone who'd create and he'd finish, and you've got Erling Haaland, where if you give them an opportunity, they're going to finish that. Mark Cueto is absolutely one of those. And so is Chris Ashton. That's, that's oh, an illegal hey, chess move, hey. that is. This, uh, no, 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 might, no. Might just, you might just need a bit so, more creativity somehow, in the Somehow back the three. ball boys ended up on the field. <laughs> you again. might just, just need a bit more creativity in the back three with uh, Healy there. So Healy's got to go over here, right? Just way, 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 way over here. Well, no, can can oh, look, guys, if you push far enough, he, he can do You would definitely make a forehead 15 as well, to be fair. 41 consecutive caps on the wing, just saying. Which is more than both Coeto and Ashton. Um, he broke the try scoring record yeah. in the Premiership. He's got to be in there as a finisher, but I don't think you can have him and Coeto. Oh, that's well, that's the, my point as well. I think Coeto is great as well, but I don't. I, I don't. Talk to me about. Uh, talk to me about um, oh, Alessandro oh, Tuolani. The big thing about him that that you understand his impact. You'd go to England training, and a lot of the other wingers there would be asking you, "What's he like?" And there was genuine. You could see there was a little bit of nervousness about playing against him, and. I just like that balance. You've got the finisher, but you also need people to be able to come off that blind wing and dent holes and create stuff for you. And he was so good at that, coming off on the inside of 10, off line-outs, scrums, when he was in his wing. And I know, you know, I know we've seen lots of physical wingers, but teams with physical wingers on one side and a finisher on the other tend to do very well. And certainly that was the, the Leicester philosophy. We've not seen that. another specimen on the wing in the Premiership than him. Nandolo. OK, we've not seen... <laughs> apart from Nandolo, I, I still think defensively, if you're brave enough, you can negate his strengths. Um, I don't think with some of these other guys, you've got more... You know, if, I'm, if, if you're defending out there... I mean, wingers are, winger against winger, it's a different story, but you can tackle him, you can if, turn you, him. if you've got a good strategy. With some of these guys, their talent, their pace, the pace is the, is the real worry for me when out on the wing. I'm giving the international winger, the, yep. the, the British and Irish line winger here, the vote on the wingers. Just tackle him, mate. He's all day long. Just tackle him. Like everything we've spoken about, is about balance. And whilst you might still debate the centre partnerships and the debate mm. of that, for me, the best balance back three is Alessana and having played against him. Yes, there's frailties, but I'd rather focus on what players can bring than what they can't. And he could do something not many other wingers in the 20 years were able to do. And that's a fear factor. He could roam and looking at how he could get set up on the platform provided to him, I think that is a wonderful balance. Yeah, I agree. Play. I, 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 I can't understand why. I mean, listen, it's not my position, clearly, but why this guy? This guy was a legend. Quite how he ended up at Leicester, uh, because if you, I mean, once you have got that full pack, you're never really going to get much ball, are you? Well, so, I think Murphy, it was the seven trophies that drew, drew him. Yeah, there. do you think so? He left. He left Ireland quite young. He was very young yeah. when he came over to play for Tigers, and as in, it didn't start so well initially for him. And he was terrified coming over. He even talk to him about it. But my word, so talented. What a player. I think. What a player. The great thing about him is we see so many players come into the Premiership with a box of tricks, so much talent, but they overuse it. He was a brilliant tactical player, aerially fantastic, but he would only pull out those bits, moments of brilliance when it was on and when there was an opportunity. He's still done stuff that I haven't seen 
replicated since the time against Northampton where he chipped it to himself and the player in front of him turned around to catch the chip and the ball wasn't there. Um, he literally just knocked it up into his so, hands. So tell so. me, Benny, why, why, but, why does he not get in ahead of well, Goody? Well, Goody's just been put there for now, for, for part of the discussion. We haven't, we haven't finalised that one. I'll move him over here but to have this chat. There Alex go. Good, you know, has been an unbelievable servant for, for Saracens as the well. big decision so here. That's a tough decision. I, don't, I think that is too difficult to call at 15 mm. for both of them because they're both sensational. Yeah. But, and very similar. And very, very similar. But what could be a different conversation is if you took Ashton out and put Murphy in, you might have a better balance in your back three. Oof. He can't. He's a, he, no. the, the record. No, I know, I know. Yeah. I, but it, look, it's not easy. It's not, it's not enough pace. It's not easy. Do you know what's interesting about these two guys, their international careers? Jordan was just too good and exciting to play for what was a very boring <laughs> Irish team at the time. And, well, good, he's just... What he, fancy? He, he, just, he can play so many different positions. He just... I don't know if you confuse management or what happens. Who did, yeah, you, but who he, did you go for, Ugo? Because you, you played with a very good... <laughs> Premiership fullback as well in, in Brown, Mike Brown. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Mike Brown, for me, would be part of the conversation. Um, but when you look at records and tries and when you look at trophies that are won, unfortunately, that, for me, was the differentiating factor between those two and maybe Mike Brown not featuring on the board. Mike Brown's one of the best players that I played with. But with Alex Good, and I went for Alex Good because he's someone that can connect the dots of a backline and actually improve the ability of every single player because of his vision. You've effectively got an international 10 playing from the back. So his kick pass run options are phenomenal. His longevity, the amount of trophies that he's won, I just think he's the type of player through his actions just makes everyone better, it's, makes the it's team so, tick. It's so hard. It is so hard to but call. But Jordan Murphy I, could I, do the I same. chose Jordy because emotionally I played against him and with, you know, and with him, I think he would be there. Goody, not, not, um, Alex Good, not necessarily the same. Do, do you want to vote on this? Do you want to vote? How do you want to do it? Do you want to, who's, who's, I, I don't know who I would pick between the two of them. Uh, it's so, Alex, who's, who's for Alex? I'm, I mean, I selected Alex Good in my team. Um, it's mad because everything I said about Alex Good, I could have been describing Jordan Murphy. Mm, mm. I truly could have. And that's what makes it so difficult. It'd be easier if they were both that exceptional but different style players than you're just yeah. selecting a And they're both winners. They're, they both have yeah. that mentality as well I, to I'm, drive it. I, I went for Jordan um, in, in my team, so I'll, I'll stick with that. I'm more likely to bump into him and it'd be less embarrassing <laughs> if, you, if you went with them. Let's go with a vote. I'm... You know, um, who are you voting for? I'm going to go last because it might all be done by then. Benny, you've I'll gone go Jordan. Jordan. I'll stick with Jordan. I, I picked uh, Jordy. Goody. <laughs> oh, Thomas Simon Cowell. Yeah. Uh, well, you sound a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you went uh, with all Leicester in your team, really, um, you'd be backing down now if you picked him. Well, I picked, I, I picked Jordy. I, and I've got so much admiration for this guy, it's really difficult not to put him in the team. It's a really good side. Uh, tell me how this team plays. What do they do? What's their IP? Keep it in the uh, Well, pack. you can play any way <laughs> in which you want to play. When you have so much quality in that forward pack and then you've got this once-in-a-generational player in Charlotte Brits who's probably more likely to play in the backs and, in fact, you could probably put him into 13 <laughs> alongside Fraser Waters, I think it just allows you so many different options because the quality of ball and the front football and the speed of ball allows these people to do whatever they want to do. You batter them and then you've got two uh, generals there that have the vision and the command of their forward pack because that's really important. When you've got a forward pack like that, if you've got week nine and ten, they don't get the ball back. But if you've got people that, that get what they want, we've got a lot of space out wide for these guys to explore. Um, who captains the side? Jono. Jono captains the team. Jono's captain. That's your team. You're not happy with that, but they'll do a job for you. Outvoted. OK. That's part yeah. of the debate. Signed off. Yeah. Happy. Well, there you go. There's your team. Oh, celebrate. Well, sorry, before we go, yeah. actually, this is our last time together in this studio. So I just I wanted to make sure that we all left with a memento. If you just wait a second, oh. I've got a memento for us. Oh, you're all heart, Austin. You're all what's heart. He, what's he got? Just I thought oh. I've got one of these for each of us. Yeah. We can just take it home. And oh, it was on the so, wall outside, and I just good. thought, you know, it's beautiful. I mean, uh, that. Yeah. If I can't get to sleep at night. Yeah, it'll scare <laughs> the burglars. Good. Excellent. Thanks so much. Well done, everyone. Hang on. What's that? It's the end of the show, lads. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Carry on the debate in your pub, in your club, in your sitting room. That's what it's there for, boys. We're going to do that in a watering hole. Thanks for your company. Take care and bye-bye.